You are watching a master at work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the LK5 Pro, which is an FDM printer from Longo. I could be very much the deciding factor on whether or not you want to purchase one of these or not. I'm going to be looking at unboxing, upgrading, and probably some of the tuning elements that needed to happen with this printer as well. It's a 300, 300 by 400 FDM printer. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you smash a little like and then leave any comments down below and let's get straight on into it, shall we? Here we go. Okay, let's get started on this. For those of you who don't know how to unbox a printer, this is how you go about doing it. Now, the printer is a 300 by 300 by 400 FDM printer with a single Z axis using Trinamic stepper drivers, which means that it's ultra quiet. And the good news in this case is that when you do open the box, you will indeed find a list of instructions, the heated beds, and the rest of the 3D printer. In fact, I was quite impressed with this particular 3D printer because it was very, very well boxed and everything had been very well cared for and packed and it looked the business. And the reason I mention this, of course, is because sometimes they're not that well packed. So well done longer for packing this so incredibly well. As you can see here, I'm just looking through the instructions just to kind of find out what I need to do. Generally, when you build a 3D printer, you're pretty much doing the same thing over and over because they are relatively similar to uh, a previous build that possibly I may have done. Uh, this one in particular sort of reminded me of an early CR10 S3 with the single axis that they brought out many, many years ago. There's me swashbuckling with the uh, spatula. So this is a kit printer. There isn't much to it. It's only a couple of screws that you have to put in. And inside that box, you'll also find things like the USB drive. There's a spare Z-axis switch as well. And then you'll see me taking out the rods, which are basically for stability. Uh, so this printer is 90% pre-assembled with a stable triangular structure. The longer LK5 Pro is a large affordable 3D printer with a 90% pre-assembled printing size of 300 by 300 by 400 with dual inlensed rods apparently, which hold the Z as a steady triangular structure for better quality of 3D printing. So let's speed this up a little bit. These are the stand-ups for the Z, which you can see quite clearly there. You'll want to face the Z top brackets towards you and towards the front of the printer when, just before you install them. So just make sure that you don't mess that one up. Inside this box, of course, you will find the glass bed, which uh, is very, very nice, actually. Very nice to print on. It's a glass bed with, there's an additive I think they put on top of this, which basically helps you release the print when it cools. Uh, it is a full heated bed as well. And there's the printer just inside. And again, there's a lot of kind of stuff here that you just need to um, just be mindful of and just make sure that uh, you've got everything that's listed on your uh, spec sheet as well. And uh, make sure that nothing is missing. Now they did send me, I think in this case, this was a European kettle lead, but no matter about that because we have plenty of kettle leads here, of course. So let's get this sucker out the box. I'll speed this part up. So just going through a number of items that you'll find in the box, this is the Z stepper motor, which attaches via two screws to the uh, Z uprights. The longer screen, which actually is a pretty interesting display, and I'll come onto that in a little bit. This works very similarly to the CR6 style um, screen as well. It has that same sort of connector that's on the back. So I don't know quite if there's a connection between the two companies, but it certainly looks very, very similar. Uh, this is a sticker that kind of fell off something, which is now living here so there you go nice warning for you so inside the box there are things like little clips little cables and bits and pieces like that the usual kind of stuff that you find in a 3d printer so i'm not going to spend too much time talking about that in particular let's talk a little bit about this printer for a second it is an easy build it does have silent stepper motors it's got a nice print surface the touch screen is uh, unique and uh, quite easy to use. Out of the box, the calibration is pretty much there, uh, depending on which one you get. It's got an adequate motion system, quite a good rigid frame, and reasonably good print quality. As I've said before, it's an FDM printer. You know the print size already. The printing temperature runs around about 190 to 250 at the very maximum. The nozzle diameter is 0.4. Uh, it has got a filament detector, it has got resume printing, and it does say in the manual that it can print of speeds upwards of 180 millimeters per second. However, I probably wouldn't take it past 80. Uh, slicing software is Cura. It's got a micro SD card, or you can use your USB cable. The gross weight is around about 13 kilos. The printer dimensions are 580 by 540 by 663, and the package dimensions are 662 by 588 by 193. So as you probably have already noticed, I did delve into the electronics to have a quick look at which board we're using. We're using an LGT kit board, 
which uh, is a proprietary board for them, I believe. The Trinamic stepper drivers, very much similar to the uh, FL Sun, where they always cheap out on the uh, Trinamic stepper drivers on the extruder. They are tri Trinamic stepper drivers on the uh, X, Y, and Z axis, but on the uh, extruder, they put a, a generic uh, driver into that. We are running a Changling power supply, which is at 24 volt and 360 watts, which is very much a standard or was a standard for Creality back in the day as well. And you'll notice as well that there is some movement inside of the bed, which is probably due to transportation. So all we're going to do here is just modify the eccentric nuts that are on the bottom and just make sure that that's going to move backwards and forwards without too much wobble. So I'm pretty happy with the way that that's turned out now. And of course, next, I'm just going to just make sure I've got all the cables to hand. And generally, you'll find with these kind of cables is that everything will already be labeled as X, Y and Z. And then it'll also give you some uh, limit switches as well. And it'll just be labeled up with what you need to plug into and where. It should be relatively straightforward. And again, if you just check over the manual, you should be in a pretty good place. And of course, the white cable at the back is for the heater. It is a little bit temperamental to get on. So I had to check this a few times just to make sure I had it going on the right way. I can't remember if I did or if I didn't now, but it goes in this time in any case. And it might just be worth perhaps installing a strain gauge on the back of that so it doesn't pull out too easily there is a clip on it means that it should pretty much stay in place but uh, it might be a modification perhaps for the future and i just referenced the manual just to make sure that uh, i haven't missed anything in regards to the instructions now unfortunately at this part i decided that i was going to put the gantry onto the z uh, axis but it's kind of not at the best possible angle but just to explain how this goes together that's a pre-assembled part which is the gantry elements all you do with that one is reverse that straight up onto the z and then you'll basically be placing that on top i would then suggest that you flip it on its side then you can then start working the screws that are provided in the packet straight into the bottom you might notice as well that there are four stand-up legs on this which I think is an interesting design choice, but I can only imagine it's only for the fan venting on the bottom of the printer, which of course is for the power supply unit. So right now there's only a few more things to do, just making sure that we attach the Z stepper motor to the framework, and then we start plugging all the cables in. Again, they are all labeled, so you shouldn't have too many issues with this particular process. Next, I'm gonna run the Z rodded bar straight down into the coupler and then I'll just give that a tighten up with the grub screws at the bottom. So we move to the top of the Z axis and just attach this little bearing to the very, very top. This is basically just to keep the rod tracking in line and we're almost at the end and this shouldn't really take you more than 10 to 15 minutes to basically install and set up. So these are the triangular rods that basically give the stability to the Z axis as this can go up to around about 400 millimeters. You might start losing some of the print detail or clarity when it gets up to that kind of level. These again are just held on with four machine screws which are relatively easy to install. And then you'll also see that there is a nut that you can then adjust and that particular nut needs to be adjusted I bought myself a digital angle ruler just to make sure that I'm getting that 90 degree angle on the Z to the Y axis. And this of course is quite important because you ultimately want the printer to be square from the foundations upwards. So the good news is we're getting towards the end. All we need to do is pop the screen on, whack the SD card in and pop the filament spool holder on the back of the printer. And then finally installing the Z limit switch before plugging the power cable in and hitting the on switch. Now the display is probably one of the unique selling points I would say to this particular printer. It is a full color LCD screen. I think it's 4.3 inches. And the touchscreen actually works very, very well. There is an optional BL touch upgrade that you can purchase in order to get your bed leveling that little bit more spot on. However, I've decided on this case not to pursue that at this point. So we are gonna be opting now for manual bed leveling, which means these little screw knobs below the printer just need to be adjusted so that a small piece of paper can pass through between the nozzle and the heated bed. You do that on the four points before it then goes to the middle of the bed and you just need to make sure that everything is square. On the SD card, you will find a number of print files and it does take a few minutes to get up to 200 degrees and 50 degrees on the heated bed but when it finally reaches temperature the print should just start however in my case i hadn't loaded any filament so i quickly had to do that as well it did give me a message to say that i needed to load the filament which you'll see now so the test print that I opted for was a simple square. This came out totally fine. However, I did notice that the fan that's used to cool the filament 
was actually blowing on the nozzle, which meant that in turn, that the heat was fluxing a very small amount. That being the case, I was able to find a couple of mods on Thingiverse for this printer. The first one was for the fan, which directs the cooling towards the filament instead of the nozzle, and also a strain gauge, because of course with that bed flinging backwards and forwards, it's good to keep those cables safe and tidy. So what have we been printing with this machine? Well, the first thing that I printed was a little mini gym because I was on the Hot Make show a couple of weeks ago and there he is. Now the, the print is actually really, really smooth and really, really nice in fact. Um, there are a couple of weird little parts on here which are caused by the, uh, the, the cooling fan. Uh, but now that we've got that sorted out, the prints have been a hell of a lot better. I've been printing a lot of these arches, which are used for the uh, the Halloween light show that I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. This has all come out really, really nicely. We plugged 12mm LED lights into those. The next print I did, and this was um, this was a weird one because I, I tested uh, a Prusa, the Kaiwu, and also this particular printer with exactly the same g-code just for the crack to see how these things would turn out and actually this was one of the worst prints because of the retraction because some of the issues that this printer has in regards to tuning that prusa and kaiwu don't have so the main issues were actually on the supports i don't know if you can see down here when i was taking the supports off it wasn't particularly nice um the print isn't bad but these little sticking points and it's hairy and nasty and again retraction was definitely needed on that now um i've literally just finished this one this is a mini joel um and he's not so mini he's he's pretty maxi actually this was a 60 hour print and he's 400 mil high it's it's pretty good we did have a filament change just around here uh, I don't know if you can really see that, but there is a small filament change line which you tend to get with these things. So we do have a little bit of ringing on this and I'm very much going to put that down to the way that this printer is designed. The rods are all good, but when the thing moves, when it's shaking backwards and forwards, it really does shake that printer. So if I can modify that, I will. And I bring, I'm pretty sure that a lower center of gravity is probably going to be the best way forward for that. But how cool is this? And this is 5%. This took 60 hours. There's uh, four, uh, skin, four layer skins on this. The Z seam is just down the back here as well. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, I, you know, that's a, that's a nice print to have gotten out of this printer straight away. Um, just with a little bit of tuning and uh, and the airflow um, just being moved around. Now, I am impressed with this printer. The LCD screen is very, very good. It does give you some accurate information and it prints pretty well. The bits that I don't like about it are things like the single Z, which we touched on before, and other printers that I've seen with single Zs. Normally, we want to sort of jewel those up. So you can co-phase, stick another Z motor on there. It will be a mod, or what you could do is, is you could co-link at the top. I've done that with Creality products before, where we're able to sort of drive two Z-Rods instead of one, and it just makes sure that they're in synchronization. So what are the results? Well, during testing, I actually performed 192 hours of 3D printing on this machine, and so far I was able to also up the speed by 20%, so it still delivers a good result at 92 millimeters per second. But overall, with the tuning of the printer, it could perform slightly better, and I think more at an Optimum. That being said, I did run a PID tune followed by an extruder calibration and saw better results on the prints on things like infill and retraction, delivering a pretty good print at the end. So the price for this printer is £238.09 or $319.99 in dollars. There will be a Black Friday deal which gives you a further 10% and the link for that will be in the description. A little note for UK buyers, you might get stung with a customs bill unfortunately and there's not a damn thing that you can do about that. So a couple of honourable mentions if you are looking for this particular printer and certainly if you are looking at other printers overall, Creality do a CR10 V2 which has a very very similar setup with dual z's but from the looks of things here it is coming in at around about 350 pounds crease do a cs10 pro which is on banggood for 221.59 uh, has dual z shipping is an additional 45 pounds but it's actually unclear on what board and things like that is going to be running so it might not even be a silent 3d printer now in regards to the silence of this particular 3d printer it's pretty much there apart from the extruder. Now the extruder does put out a very, very light, high pitch noise when it retracts and it moves. It's kind of like almost like a little small beep. Uh, the pictures that you can see on the internet are like people sleeping next to it and all that kind of stuff. Um, the fan noise is still 
as all printers is going to be a small issue it is going to be probably the noisiest part of that printer is going to be the fan noise of course you can change them out of course you can use different methods and different ways of working but as a stock beginners printer this is certainly one that i would recommend so maybe you should get yourself online right now and purchase one of those if you are in the market to do so my name is sam prentice you've been awesome make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time bye for now